Hello and welcome to worship for this Sunday, the 2nd of January at Aberlour Parish Church. We are still in this season, a short season of Christmas, and so we have our Advent candles. Of course, we also have started the year 2022. A happy new year to you. I hope it's a good one. We come this Sunday hearing a story of John the Baptist saying to what are going to be Jesus' earliest disciples, this is the Lamb of God. So too, we come and we worship. Let's worship God. us pray. God of change, who gave us the seasons with their ups and downs, days and nights, with life and death, growth and decay, we are glad that you do not insist that we are static, immovable like concrete. Instead, you made us for variety for response, to act and react, to change around us, not as unfeeling robots, but as real people. So we come to you today with all the swings of moods and surges of feelings that we have, bringing our highs and lows, knowing that you understand all of it. When life gets on top of us, when we hit rock bottom, you understand when tiredness bends us until we snap or when we're frustrated, hurt or just plain fed up. And we're relieved that it is then, when we need you most of all, that you don't fold your arms, looking down your nose at us, insisting that we display the right feelings before you accept us. Instead, you take us as we are. You hold us, undoing the straps of pain and frustration that bind us and letting them fall at your feet while you embrace us in your care. 
So we bring all to you, God, in our worship, knowing that you care. And we look to you for the strength to continue this day and in all the days to come. Speak to us, God, your peace. Give us rest in you. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of John, reading at chapter 1 and verses 35 through 51. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Philip. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen. As we go through John's Gospel, we're going to have several readings like this. What I mean by that is several readings where lots happens with a lot of a cast of characters happening in a very short space of time. So today we have lots of characters all involved in this broader story of how Jesus calls the first disciples, in John's Gospel at least. And because of the interplay of lots of different characters, there's a lot to look at. If we even start with John the Baptist, and we just stopped at what John the Baptist says when he says, here is the Lamb of God, we could have a whole sermon in itself. Because that phrase, which we know through centuries worth of hymn writing and liturgy and Christian tradition, Jesus as the Lamb of God, is actually only uttered twice in the New Testament. And that's both times in the first chapter of John's Gospel by John the Baptist. But we don't just stop at that intriguing phrase, Lamb of God. There's also all these other characters in play. So there's John the Baptist, 
there's Jesus and this cry of the Lamb of God. But two of John the Baptist's disciples, and note that John the Baptist has disciples here, two of them follow Jesus because of what John says. And of those two, one is named Andrew, the other is unnamed, but in the tradition of John's gospel, this is probably the disciple that's later described as the beloved disciple and is probably identified as John, as in John and James, the sons of Zebedee, named in Mark's gospel. So we've got those two original disciples. And then Andrew brings his brother Simon, who's given a different name, Simon Peter, Peter, Cephas, the rock. And then another two are added to the number, Philip first, and then Nathaniel. And if we wanted to spend time on it, we could have discussions about the very odd conversation that Jesus and Nathaniel have. Partly about the prejudice of Nathaniel not seeing that anything could, good could come out of Nazareth. And partly a conversation about how quickly Nathaniel seems to change his mind. And this strange thing of Nathaniel suddenly confessing Jesus as the Son of God only on the basis that Jesus says he saw him under a fig tree. It's a very puzzling exchange. But the wider theme, I think, of the passage is about this almost magnetism that Jesus has in this passage. That almost with very little effort or almost it just happens, people are coming to Jesus and following Jesus. And very quickly we have well, four named disciples and probably six of them that have come to G join Jesus. And I think part of the point of John's telling it this way is to note that these six disciples, the four named ones, all come to Jesus in different ways. Andrew and the one that we'll call John have come because of John the Baptist's cry, Lamb of God. They are the ones who listened when John the Baptist, the one that we called a prophet pointing the way, just came and followed Jesus. They just go and follow him and actually end up pestering Jesus. Jesus turns around and says, what do you want? What are you looking for? And they're the ones that name him teacher, rabbi. Can we see where you're staying? And then Andrew, one of those two, is one who goes away and gets his brother, Simon. And Simon's called in a different way. He's brought to Jesus, but in meeting Jesus is given a new identity, a new name. Cephas, translated Peter, the rock. So that's Andrew and the unnamed disciple, we'll call him John, and Simon Peter. And then fourth we have Philip, and Philip's in Bethsaida, and Jesus just says to Philip, follow me. And Philip does. He's the one directly invited by Jesus. And it's Philip who then goes and gets Nathaniel, the more reluctant one. The one who needs persuaded that something good could possibly have come out of Nazareth. The one who sits under the fig tree, Jesus sees him and then he comes to the confession more dramatic than any of the others, you are the son of God. Different people come to Jesus in different ways. That's true today and we see in this reading that it was true at the beginning too. There are different ways of answering the call to follow Jesus. There are different ways of responding. And there are different levels of enthusiasm or readiness to do so. In terms of those words, come and see, follow me, the cry that Jesus is a lamb of God, the ones that come out of Jesus' own mouth are to the first two disciples, come and see, and to Philip, follow me. Come and see, follow me. Come and see what? Well, in John's Gospel, come and see who this Jesus is. Come and see the difference that the God who's made human makes in the world. Come and see what the Word made flesh, that John's Gospel's words, looks like what, it, what this person, Jesus, 
says and does in the world and come and see that something new is happening. In Revelation, in John, the author of Revelation's vision of heaven, he sees Jesus say, behold, I'm making all things new. We could take those words from Revelation as a pretty good summing up of what's happening in our passage today. Come and see, I'm making all things new. Indeed, in the passage that's just about to come, we're going to see Jesus do something really deeply symbolic, miraculously making new. Come and see the world made new. Come and see through a new perspective. Come and see yourself and your own life in new perspective. And when you see that, follow me. We look this new year perhaps for something new. We're called to follow Jesus and we will find in the year to come plenty of things that we can't plan for, plenty of new things. And when we follow Jesus, we'll find these new things and we're called to change in light of them. But not change once and be made new once into a new place to stay static again. And this is the thing. Jesus says, come and see and follow me. And the one we follow is one who's on the move. The Jesus who travels through the Gospels, meeting new people, responding to human needs and human questions. When we become made new in faith, we're not called to one new place and to stay there. We're called to follow the one who makes all things new, always. As we enter 2022, may we be faithful in that calling. And however we answer, and we know there are different ways of answering our calling and following Jesus, may it be a faithful following. And may we be the ones who can come and see and answer Jesus' call to follow me. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, at the start of a new year we bring you our hopes for the world and for its peoples. Grant us peace in place of strife, a desire for justice instead of a dash for growth, the building up of forests, not their pulling down, the cleansing, not the pollution of our seas. In place of hatred, goodwill. We pray for those in leadership in our country, for politicians, social policy shapers, for business leaders. Grant them wisdom and courage in this year ahead. Grant them integrity of life Grant them strength in every good resolution. And for those who lead in the church, grant humble hearts, minds to listen to you and to others, the ability to discern from the good from the bad, the wise from the foolish, the fruitful from the empty. Lord, this year will bring its share of illness and bereavement and family conflict. We pray now for those who already face these trials. May they know your healing and hope and the good news of Jesus Christ, who is Lord of this life and the life to come. The one who is human like us yet picked up our frail bodies and takes us with him into life eternal. May his spirit bear witness to these things, to what you are doing in their lives and ours. Lord, this year many words will be spoken in public in our land. We take a minute to reflect quietly on what lies ahead for each one of us and to ask your help and blessing. Lord God, one day we will see all things gathered up in Jesus Christ. May we live now in the light and the love of the always of your love. Amen.
So go this year in new love, in new light. But may the eternal blessing of God, that is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, be with you. The blessing of Father, Son and Holy Spirit be yours this day and forevermore.